Most people don't think about the surveillance cameras they see throughout their everyday life. They are everywhere. The United Kingdom, for example, has some of the most surveillance cameras per capita in the world. For this video, I want to talk about the companies making those cameras. Hangzhou Hike Vision Digital Technology is a Chinese state-owned company. The name is pronounced Hike Vision in the U.S., but I've also heard Hick Vision abroad, though doing so might inadvertently offend people. The company dominates the surveillance technology market in both its native China and abroad. It is notorious for its close state ties, for being sanctioned by the American government, and for some shoddy security hacks of its software. But there is another angle about Hike Vision's rise to prominence that interests me, and that is, how did it get to be so big and so dominant globally in the first place? But first, I want to take the time to ask you to subscribe to the Asianometry newsletter. I'm starting to get on a bit of a roll in putting out new content, in addition to what you might find in the videos. I just finished up a newsletter about the Yizhu Bao P2P scandal. I reflected on this monumental Ponzi scheme and how it might have affected the Chinese government's current behavior towards Ant Group. You can find the link to the newsletter in the video description below, or you can just go to Asianometry.com. Subscribe and I'll try to make it worth your while. You can expect a new newsletter every four days at 1 a.m. Taiwan time. Much thanks. Hikvision is China's leading video surveillance manufacturer. It is based in Hangzhou of the Zhejiang province, one of China's richest and most beautiful cities. In 2019, the company generated 8.8 .8 billion in revenue and made some 1.9 billion in profit. They employ over 40,000 people in over 150 countries around the world. When most people think of Hike Vision, they think of cameras, and they offer cameras in every conceivable form and function you can possibly think of. They got AI equipped cameras suitable for monitoring cars on highways, industrial locations, and recognizing individuals by their faces. For clients in emerging markets with small budgets, they offer AccuSense cameras at all sorts of price ranges. These cameras have such excellent AI that I heard that they've been replacing human guards entirely. For higher-end clients who want the best, they got the chunky-sized dome cameras that swivel and are supposedly bomb-resistant. They got a line of cameras with AI for seeing far in the dark, their Dark Fighter series, AI cameras for catching traffic violations, so on. You get the point. But wait, there's more. The company called itself an IoT company, expanding its product range far beyond just the surveillance cameras you see out on the street. Their assortment is stunning and is part of their competitive advantage. Hikvision also makes intercoms, storage servers for storing the video footage recorded by their cameras, there's one example there, and AI-equipped cloud servers. Hikvision is a global giant with hundreds of product lines and leading market share in the video surveillance market. With video surveillance cameras having been around for decades, you might be surprised to find that Hikvision, the company, is younger than Google. In 2001, a young baby-faced Hong Kong immigrant named Gong Hong Jia bought a 49 or 51% stake of a government-backed lab, depending on which source you consult. This lab would be privatized and turned into today's Hike Vision. This privatization arrangement means that the company has direct ties to the Chinese central government. China Electronics Technology Group is a state-owned enterprise under the central government, it and another affiliate collectively own 42% of Hike Vision shares. While the company has tried to separate itself and its everyday operations from its shareholders, this is kind of hard to ignore. The company started off selling video compression cards based on the H.264 video algorithm. The algorithm allowed video footage to be better compressed without taking up so much space. This made Hike Vision products ideal for DVRs and DVR cards the devices that record and save video data from surveillance cameras. In 2006, the company leapt out of the video card market and DVM OEM industry into making directly branded video cameras for surveillance and industry verticals like healthcare. It quickly consolidated its position as the leading surveillance camera vendor in China. The company then aggressively moved to export its products abroad. Developing markets looking for a cheap digital surveillance camera gravitated to Hike Vision cameras because those cameras recorded high quality video, had a broad range of features, and were very cheap. 
cheaper than what is seemed to be possible. Some of these cheap cameras are sold under the Hike Vision name. Others are resold by American distributors under their name, Honeywell, Security Camera Warehouse, and GE. As of 2017, are such examples. This resulted in many Hike Vision-made cameras ending up in places you would not expect them to be, like in U.S. Army bases and American embassies. The company likes to talk about its R&D efforts. The annual report mentions R&D in 53 of its 312 pages. The company constantly talks up how much it spends on R&D. In 2019, Hike Vision invested 9.51% of its operating income into R&D. They employed 19,065 engineers around the world, and in 2019, they were granted 1,339 patents. Today, they have over 5,000 design and software patents in total. They were amongst the first manufacturers to come out with 4K cameras in 2014. In 2017, they released the first "quote-unquote" deep learning AI video recorder server, the DeepMind NVR, creatively named after Google DeepMind, a year after AlphaGo beat Lisa Dol. So it's fair to say that Hike Vision purports itself as a cutting-edge technology company, researching and coming up with innovative, brand-new technologies in the surveillance camera space. Chinese President Xi Jinping visited the company in October 2017 and praised its development of talents and innovation-driven development. And I would say Hike Vision deserves credit for doing good technology work. It has helped them push out a wide variety of popular products. But it's also hard to ignore that the company is also very heavily backed by Chinese tax money. I would argue that Hike Vision's dominant position in the surveillance camera market today. Is driven as much by its close government ties and rich contracts as its dedication to R and D. Hike Vision has benefited from its state-owned roots as well as close ties to the state. Company CEO Chen Zhongnian is the Communist Party secretary of the Hike Vision parent company, the aforementioned CETC. Research head Pu Shiliang, for example, has a second job. As a high-ranking leader at a lab within the Ministry of Public Security, Hike Vision has also ridden an immense government internal security spending wave. Beginning with the 2008 Beijing Olympics, the Chinese government has spent billions of dollars with Hike Vision. Hike Vision's Safe City Camera Project in Chongqing reached 1.2 billion dollars in 2011, and thousands of cameras can be seen of Chongqing streets. Hike Vision cameras were also selected for the 2014 APEC summit, the 2015 military parade commemorating China's World War II victory, and more. The Chinese free money going Hike Vision's way is quite significant. In the year 2015, for example, tax refunds, deferred tax assets, and "quote unquote" special project funding made up 22% of Hike Vision's profit. Remember Xi Jinping's visit in October 2017. Afterwards, the company received a further two hundred million dollars in subsidies a year later. In addition, Hike Vision received billion-dollar loans from Chinese policy banks. A policy bank is a government-owned financial corporation that disperses loans as according to a country's stated policy desire. Because these loans have strategic value, they do not necessarily need to make money for the bank making them. I need to say here that China is not the only country with a policy bank. America, for example, has the Export-Import Bank of the United States, but its existence and impact is fiercely debated in the U.S. public sphere. Some see it as a way to help encourage American exports abroad; others see it as a way to give politically connected companies free money. These artificially low prices have led to substantial disputes and complaints filed by the USA in the World Trade Organization by WTO rules, which, admittedly, Neither America nor China even attempt to follow nowadays. These government-backed subsidies are illegal. On a side note, some people argue that more competition and lower prices for consumers can only be a good thing. After all, the consumer benefits, right? But I really do caution you from drawing a one-to-one -one line from quote lower prices to quote consumer wins to quote good for the market. Because doing so invites artificially distorting market behavior like cross subsidies and dumping. Eventually, in the long term, 
you end with a market without competition. I find it interesting that the same people who make these consumer benefit arguments also tend to rail against Amazon, Google, and quote the monopoly. These people are basically talking Amazon's book. They probably don't know it. Just a side note. The subsidies are critical, and they rightly get a lot of press. But I do not think that Hike Vision and fellow Chinese competitor Dahua would be so prevalent today globally if it were not for two other major changes in the video security market. The first major change involves a generational shift in surveillance camera products that occurred in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Before then, most surveillance cameras were analog cameras. Analog cameras used copper wires to send video signals from the camera to the television. Think of like your old school televisions with rabbit ears and whatnot. In the early 2000s, a new type of camera emerged: the digital IP camera that sent video over the internet using similar protocols as those used by YouTube and Netflix. These cameras offered better quality video, but can be more complicated to use, set up, and debug. American companies like Honeywell, Pelco, and GE dominated the analog camera world. They failed to innovate and jump on the analog to digital transition. China's companies, amongst others like Swedish company Axis, did. America got left behind and left out in the cold. This is a disappointing blight on the state of American manufacturing today. The second major change has to do with digital video standards. In 2008, the surveillance camera industry came together to develop an open standard for IP cameras. These companies include major players like Panasonic, Bosch, Canon, Axis, and Sony. This industry group was called the Open Network Video Interface Forum, or ONVIV. ONVIV soon released a single unified video standard that allowed IP cameras to talk to the rest of the security system. The industry group soon developed cameras using the standard. And it prevented a Tower of Babel situation where each manufacturer's cameras could and would not talk to another manufacturer's databases,、uh, security systems, whatnot. But the thing about open standards is that anyone can use them. Hike Vision and Dahua jumped on this open Onviv standard and used it as their doorway abroad. Now it was easy for them to make a single product that can be plugged into the incumbent Western security systems. If Chinese subsidies made Hike Vision fat in its own national market, then Onviv and the analog transition let Hike Vision use those subsidies to escape the confines of those national borders to bully the world market. In August 2018, the U.S. government began to do more about making sure that the systems being used in critical locations did not have Chinese-made parts in them. They banned Dahua and Hike Vision from their government purchasing programs. Later that year. The U.S. government started to give the two the Huawei treatment. They ban exports of certain critical U.S. components going to Hike Vision. Hike Vision might be a Chinese company, but their AI tech products are still heavily reliant on Intel and Nvidia semiconductors. Their computer vision chips are designed by California-based Fabless Ambarella and Fab at Samsung and TSMC. Considering what these AI tech products are being used for, it is natural that the U.S. government would move to create this export ban. Hike Vision stock crashed 25% from its top after the bans were announced. The company quickly dedicated resources to replacing these chips with Chinese native technologies. They announced a push into AI and away from security, trying to develop enterprise solutions like cow counting AI. My guess is that they're trying to remake themselves into something like Meg V, Sense Time, or the like. I did a newsletter about Meg V earlier. But right now, Hike Vision remains heavily, deeply dependent on the government and its public security contracts. Subsidies grew 73% in 2018, and then another 30% in 2019. They received 153 million in subsidies from the Chinese government in the first half of 2020. I expect them to continue getting a whole lot more of the same in the years to come. All right, guys, take care of yourselves out there. Happy 2021. Bye bye.